Hello and welcome back to a new video about how to learn mathematics. And this video today is a little bit different because I just want to show you two examples of exercises. And the reason for that is that you always have to do exercises, you have to solve problems to understand mathematics. However, now the thing is, out there you find good problem sheets, but also really bad ones that could harm your learning process even. Okay, before we start, I should tell you again that my videos and here my website is not really targeted to high school students, it's targeted to adults that want to learn mathematics. So for example, my Start Learning Mathematics course here is not suited for high school students who first need to know how to calculate a lot of things. No, it's targeted to people, to students who study something with mathematics and now want to know what the foundations of mathematics really are. This is important to know because it means that the teaching style and the problems one gives out to solve are already different than something one would give to children. However, I would say at the transition between school and university, these two styles should more or less coincide. And that's where the two exercises I show you now fit in. I found them at an official web page from the Austrian Ministry, which means these are exercises that are given to people, to young students around 18. So these are official exam exercises, so not really exercises for practicing, but still we see what is required. And as you can see here, I just use Google Translate to put everything in English. And now the first thing I want to do is to look at this task 3, which is about system of linear equations. And you see, we have two parameters in A and C from the real numbers, and the statement is that this system should have no solution at all. And the problem I see there immediately is that often, since we only have two equations, we put them together in some sense and then something comes out by some calculations. However, I would say for linear equations you should always use a system which is scalable, so you transform it into something which also would work if you have more than two equations. And as you should know, this is a matrix vector multiplication where we can use the Gaussian elimination. Yeah, so we rewrite the first equation as 2 minus 1 and 3 on the right hand side, and here we have a, 2 and c on the right hand side. And now the Gaussian elimination tells you use the pivot here to eliminate all numbers below. Which just means from the second row we just subtract minus a halves first row. Indeed if we do that we get exactly the zero here. And the two other numbers we just have to calculate, so here we have 2 plus a halves and here we have c minus 3 times a halves. And now we have reached the row echelon form and there we immediately see the condition we have for no solution at all. First, at the bottom we need to have a zero row on the left hand side and on the right hand side a number which is not equal to zero. Hence we get two equations here. First, no solution means 2 plus a halves is equal to zero and on the right hand side this one should be not equal to zero. So again, you could say we get two linear equations, but the second one here is actually an inequality. Therefore we don't need to do a whole calculation again in generality, because we immediately see the solution of the first equation and we just take a suitable c in the second inequality. Hence we get a is equal to minus 4, there's no choice, but for c we have a lot of possible values, only minus 6 is not possible, so you could choose 0 for example. And that's it, that's the whole exercise and I would say this is a good one, it's definitely not a hard one, but I think it's also a good one for practicing linear equations in a simple form. Indeed, the task gets much harder if we chose three equations here at the beginning and one is actually forced to do something like that in the general form. Because with just two equations here, the general structure of the row echelon form is not really needed. But still, in the end, you should know that the row echelon form gives you the solvability of the system. This so-called row echelon form could look complicated, but the important part is that below the staircase you only find zeros. Which means you could have a whole zero row at the bottom on the left hand side. 
This is not always the case, but if it happens, it can be that the system has no solution at all. And to be precise, it only happens in the case that on the right hand side there we find a non-zero number. So this is how the raw echelon form tells you if there is a solution or no solution at all. Moreover, the size of the system does not matter at all because you can always transform it into the raw echelon form and then we can satisfy this condition or not. So in the end I think this one here is not a bad exercise to learn some general linear algebra or to check if someone can solve a system with two equations. Okay, but now if we jump to part 25 it becomes a little bit stupid because now there is some application in the linear algebra. And usually I would say exercises with applications are not really suited to learn mathematics. Simply because they can distract you from the core mathematical element you actually want to learn in mathematics. So the usual order, the recommended order would be first practice the mathematics, understand the mathematics behind it before you can apply it. But of course I have to agree some applications can be motivating simply because you can see how the mathematics is involved and why is it interesting in the first place. But now comes the thing, often in mathematical tasks the applications stated there are completely nonsense. This one here is a good example because it comes in again and again as an application for calculating with vectors. There are a lot of usages of linear algebra and working with vectors in the real world and we have seen one example before because every time you have linear equations the whole linear algebra helps you to solve it. However, in the moment they fix the vector calculations with three dimensions, people come up with a lot of excuses why this should be interesting. For example, here they claim that you can use vectors to play an archery game, maybe because you can visualize a vector as an arrow. Now the first part here wants to tell you that the trajectory of an arrow you shoot in a 3D space is a line. It's just a line given with one direction. This implies that also throwing a ball would be modeled with a line. Actually this exercise here is quite standard. They give you two points in the space and they want that you calculate the equation of the line that connects both points. That would be easy. That's how you should formulate this exercise. This task should just ask give the equation for the line between these two points because nothing else is wanted here. So I see two problems here. First, an application always distracts you from the actual mathematical task, but also this application here distracts you from the real world. In this example here, there is no gravity involved and it does not even tell you that there is no gravity involved, so actually this is not an application at all. So in the end what remains is that this is not a good task at all and you should not use such exercises like that to learn mathematics in the first place. With that I would say it's good enough for today. If you want to see the whole Austrian exam here I put the link in the description and you can check it out for yourself. So let's meet in the next video where I want to show you more mathematics. So have a nice day and bye bye.